Oh my God, look at how many people showed up. I knew this was going to be exciting. Lots of people are waiting for this interview. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today we are looking at a hot penny stock. We are talking with the CEO of FLES, ticker F-L-E-S, Auto Parts for Less. Now there's a lot of information we're going to go through today, but we're not going to go through it all because that would be a very long video. What I want to do is refer you back to Buffalo Fireside Chats. Chris Davenport, the CEO, did an interview with uh, them last week, and it was a Q&A, questions and answers. And there was a lot of questions about the share structure. And it's important information, and I want you to get that. But we aren't really going to focus in on that today. We will talk a little bit about the share structure because it has changed here recently and it has a lot to do with their debt conversion, which is the big news, folks. What I want to do is focus in on the company, what it is that they actually do and how they are set up. I'm excited about this company. And Chris, he's the man who can tell us exactly what's going on. Hello, Chris. How are you doing today, friend? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. And thank you for this opportunity to to get in front of your community and uh, tell them our story, my story. Um, uh, thank you so much for that opportunity. Oh, we are excited to have you here. I'm always looking for hot penny stocks. That's what our show is all about. And personally, I like your company. I was looking at what you've been doing and where you're going and your new business model excites me. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you've actually got two divisions to your company and they're different, though they sound alike. You've got Auto Parts for Less, which is your newest launch, if you will, and you have Lift Kits for Less. But there is a huge difference between the way both of these companies are operating. And most people don't realize that Auto Parts for Less is using a business model that is the most successful business model in the world. The largest corporations in the world are using the marketplace business model. And I want you to explain the difference and tell us more about the company. I know that Auto Parts for Less has not just uh, come onto the scene here in the last couple of years. It just went public in the last couple of years. It's been around for over 10 years, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's a lot to unpack. So stop me at any time. I can start rambling. On a, but um, I love what I do. And um, I love marketplace economies, um, platform economies. These are, like you said, the most disruptive business models in the world today. The Amazon, the Etsy's, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, Flipkart, yes. Instacart right there. And they're very exciting. And, and I think there's a lot of reasons they're exciting, but fundamentally when you execute them, they benefit from what is known as um, network effects. And yes. whether you use Google or ChatGPT, I, I encourage people, if you are an investor and you're looking to better understand that business model, just simply go in and ask what a, what a network effect is and why autopartsforless.com benefits from that and say liftkitsforless.com does not benefit from network effects. And so there's always a lot of confusion when people go, oh, you sell automotive parts. So do you, com do you compete with like a rock auto? Do you compete with, with Napa? Do you compete with carparts.com? And the, the, the simple answer is we really don't because all of those companies are encouraged to join our platform, join our mission to unite the auto parts industry, benefit from, from network effects. So do we compete with carparts.com? Well, we're selling a part, but we really compete with three companies. And you might've heard of them, Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. Uh, those are the companies that we compete with because those we have the same uh, essential business model. So um, these models have been around for years um, the, and you know, I've had some investors go, well, why, why have a parts only marketplace? Why is this necessary? You know, well, I can't, I just go to Amazon or can I just go to eBay? And I'm like, of course you can, sure. but, but your argument is that, well, then there should only be one, one place to buy, I guess, you know, food or, you know, one place to buy tires and there should just be one end all and never have any kind of competition. So obviously when you bring in a, a new player, a player has a history of selling auto parts. Um, maybe there's an opportunity to do it better than Amazon. And maybe there's an opportunity to do it better than eBay and Walmart. Well, maybe first off, Amazon is like a department store. They sell everything and you've got auto parts in there in one section of the store. And you've got sellers that are selling the same part at all these various different prices, even different white label names on them. 
you're not even sure what you're getting here. When you're dealing with a company like you, you're going directly to the manufacturer of that part who is selling it to your customer. The great thing about Auto Parts for Less, it, like Amazon, chances are you don't have to knock on anybody's door and ask, do you want to be a part of our company? Do you want to sell your products here? I have sold on Amazon and they did not invite me to sell. <laughs> I wanted to sell there. I was hoping they'd let me sell there. So I've got to imagine you've got lots of people constantly coming to you or just asking to get onto that site, onto that platform. You know, actually, John, it's, believe it or not, it's, it's, when you look at developing market, a, a new marketplace, a brand new marketplace, the single most difficult um, hurdle to success is attracting either the buyer or the supplier. And there's right. a book on this called the cold start problem. And is it is and and you can, again, please, I, I encourage people use chat GPT, ask what is the single most difficult challenge to launching a double sided marketplaces. And they're going to tell you the single hardest part is, well, how do you attract a new seller if there's no buyers? Right. How you, right. How do you attract a buyer? If there's nothing in the store for sale, right? Chicken in so, the egg. That's right. That's exactly right. Chicken egg. And, uh, and, that, and that's what's unique about Auto Parts for Less is that from day one, we were able to attract sellers to our platform supply side because up till Auto Parts for Less, the only alternative was eBay or Amazon. That was it. In the last 25 years, the only parts only, the only marketplace that you could sell your part through was eBay or Amazon. So what I'm saying is eBay right. or Amazon never built those platforms to serve the parts industry. They never built them to drive value to the parts industry or help the parts industry or innovate the parts industry. The truth is they have one, the brand awareness, but two, there's a significant challenge to building a parts only marketplace. The catalog sizes are insanely large. And I, and I know people just don't really wrap their brain around that, but if you're going to build a parts only marketplace, you're, it's like building a thousand lane freeway in a town of a hundred people. You literally have to do that from a technology standpoint. Anyway, long story short, we, we were really in a unique position. A position to drive value to the supply side, the seller side. So when we launched, we, you're right, we had a lot of sellers going, we're very interested in joining. We're paying insane fees to Amazon. Yeah. Um, the, the, not just fees, but also the policies, the refund policies. You know, Amazon is a thousand pound gorilla. And I love the, now I, I'm not here to badmouth Amazon. I, right, I, right. I modeled auto parts for less after Amazon. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm not that smart. So, right. Smart, just, that's smart, just that's right. copying the winners. <laughs> that's it, right? That's, I mean, that's, that was Sam Walton with with Walmart. The guy who traveled the world and said, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Let's just take a little bit from everybody else and, and let's make the best shopping experience built around the hub and spoke kind of concept. Anyway, Auto, Auto Parts for Less was the same thing. We took the best of when we sold through liftkitsforless.com, a single seller uh store we took the best of selling we sold on amazon we sold on ebay we sold yeah. on martin sears and jet we were trying to be omnipresent so we had all that experience yeah. and then my experience of of running a marketplace or running a parts store and what's working what's not and so that's was my dream and my focus to build a parts only marketplace that drove massive value to the sellers and as much value, obviously, to the buyer as well. And that's that's where we're at today. It's fully executed. It's fully built. Launched with a little under 2 million products. Today, we sit at over 6.2 million products on the platform. Um, yeah, right? It's a, it's a big number. And ah. every day, you know, we have, I'm not kidding, John. This is how successful and how, how in demand a parts only marketplace was or is. I have major retail chains that contact me, national chains. I just got a, a, a you know, a, one of those, uh, I'm interested in learning more. I won't say who the brand is, but these are, they have chains all over the country. And that's why mm. this is a very exciting time to be part of the, the Auto Parts for Less Nation and uh, to join in our... Um, yeah, I can't imagine why any company would not want to tag into you, no matter how big they are, because they're doing the same thing. They want to be out there, ubiquitous, everywhere. They don't close doors. They open every door they possibly can to sell their products. That's I'm right. sure Amazon has Napa products being sold by Napa. I'm sure, you know, because that's what they're in business to do. 
hit every market, get as many customers as they can. Sure. Now, in in saying that you have people coming to you, are you doing any advertising? Are you doing any marketing to stir the market for buyers or sellers? Online, newspapers, TV, I mean, any sort of marketing or advertising at this point in the game. So again, that's what makes us unique. From the supply side, I would say we've spent no money on attracting sellers because there was no alternative once we launched. And we have huge technical partners, John. Uh, again, because the parts industry is uh, has these big catalogs, it's very difficult to manage. Right. Most companies um, use one of two organizations out there. And there's a few. One is called SureDone. The other is Channel Advisor, which is their name has changed, and I apologize. But we're a fully integrated partner, meaning let's say I'm a, we'll just use Napa. I'm on Napa, I'm a Napa, and I load all my entire catalog into SureDone. And SureDone connects you to the world. So who's the world? Well, it's Amazon, it's eBay, it's um, um, Walmart, anywhere you want to be. So, and auto parts for less. And that's how we were able to quickly grow our catalog size um, because through those partnerships, large sellers can connect to us basically seamlessly, load mm -hmm. up products and then get to selling without having to come into our store, learn our systems. It's all kind of done for them. So a very simple process for large sellers to connect and sell, update their pricing, update quantities throughout the day digitally, seamlessly. And, um, and that was the key to bringing on our our large supply side sellers. Now, where we're at today is um, we are entirely focused on driving revenue through our platform, both lift kits for less and auto parts for less. So right. a blended revenue model, um, that is our, when I took over and you don't, you may or may not know this, I took, I was part of the subsidiary, ran the company, the, you know, the subsidiary, not the parent company. I took control of the parent company in May of 2023. Right. And I put out a, an 8K about what my focus was, what my goals were. Number one was we had a significant burn. The company was burning cash and we had to get that under control. So that was my focus. Right. So, and I, and I, in a previous podcast, I, I announced we're basically at a break even today. So that's exciting, obviously. Oh, yeah, congratulations. That's big, right? It's huge. It we're still at a minor burn, but not significant. 22, we're burning a half a million a month. I think we had a net loss of $9 million. Um, 23, huge improvement. Did, um, did you just say from a half a million down to 23? A half a million a month down to 13 grand was our net loss last month. Those aren't, those aren't audited yet, right? There were still, okay, in the but, group, but, but our numbers are solid internally. I feel good about that. So, yeah, yeah. So the other, the other big thing was to get the burn under control, but the other huge elephant in the room was our, when we were going to the NASDAQ, we brought in a lot of bridge lenders. Um, these are short-term guys that want to get in, get out. Well, when the NASDAQ effort failed, we were stuck with a large balance sheet challenge. And so that's where oh, I think currently the, a lot of excitement around the company is we've been able to lock up a huge portion of our convertible debt, either into a preferred share structure, a locked up time period. Right. Um, same with a co uh, common stock with a couple year lockup. Um, we still have three groups left that we are negotiating with. Okay. Um, one of those groups, uh, their doctor finalized, just waiting for signatures, basically takes uh, $2.7 million off the table, puts it into a one-year lockup so they're not selling. They're oh, not yeah. It's amazing, right? We're so close. The company has less than $5 million left on the books to lock up. I expect by the end of this week, John, to be able to announce that everybody's locked up. Now, can this blow up in my face? Of course it can, but it, these, these guys are smart. They know they're not going to get whole through dumping into a penny stock and, you know, running it down to quad zero four and reversing and reversing and reversing. It's not, right. that's not a path to success. These are smart investors. They're shrewd investors, mm -hmm. <laughs> which makes getting this done a little time consuming, but, um, you know, they want to be part of an uplift to either the New York stock exchange, the, the NASDAQ. So they're working with us. Everything's got to be docked. Everything's a process, uh, but I'm very happy with the pro with, uh, could it go faster? Of course, but I feel by the end of this week, after this last big group is, is done in terms of the, you know, it's done. We just got to sign. That's their 2.7 million of principal debt. Is that put you over 10 million now, doesn't it? In debt conversion in the last few months. Yeah, that we're at 10 million right now without them. 
So this puts us, what was it, 7.5, 785, a little under, not a little about 9 million, I guess. So, um, excellent. It, so huge progress for the company. And, and, and another, it shows a lot of confidence. I mean, debt conversion is good for the company, but to see people actually doing it, you know, I can see that your company is going to be the first marketplace auto parts store. And that first mover advantage is going to make you the leader of the pack. Who isn't going to want to be a part of that early before right. it takes off? I think this is great. And those lockup periods, that reassures me. No pump and dumps coming here. We're not going to let that news run the stock and those new investors sell their shares. No, they got to hang on to them. So I really like the terms that you're getting here. Well, you know, I, I'm, uh, I don't come from a generational wealth. I don't come from um, uh, wealth or, you know, raised by a single mom, blah, 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 whatever. What's important is I think I resonate or, and I, I want to be held responsible by, by the retail shareholder. That's important to me. Um, and the only way I'm going to be able to do that is through trust, transparency, getting in front of uh, the opportunities like this today to speak with you and your community. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. It's a core value. Um, so I'm going to fight, right? I'm going to fight hand and nail, tooth, claw to ensure that the common shareholder on this rides with me. So um, everybody you haven't even had a paycheck since December, have you? I have not, not December of 21, John, 21. 21. Yes. So uh, life is not a lot of, we're not a, a living the dream as they say. So. Uh, Holy cow. Talk yeah. about paying your dues for your company. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, sold the home. Everybody's heard the story, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, look, I'm committed to this. The reason why is I know how hard it is to execute a double-sided marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, the significant um, technology lift and look, and really, it's the parts industry is is even more difficult to execute because not only do you have this massive, large product catalog and content, images, descriptions, right? Massive, massive. But on top of that, you have a year make model fitment file. So when you walk into the story, like I got a 2016 Ford XLT with with a, a what a 6.4, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and that sits on top of a massive file. So today, like with our 6.2 million products i think are your make model fitment size is a half a billion fitments so you there's a lot to to get done here long story short is i believe in this and i'm willing to go down in flames to 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 make it happen so and i, I, and see, I, literally... I see a lot going on for auto parts for, for less but lift kits for less has already proven her success before that's right she had to disappear during covid as a lot of companies did some never came back Yours is coming back. You just brought it back last month, was it? Well, yeah, officially last month, we started um, adding products in and adding products in, and we've been slowly and gradually trying to get the product count up. Um, but yes, it's uh, fully functioning. It's up, it's running, and um, revenues are coming back pretty fast, I think, relative to what, you know, from going from no no, no sales to um, pretty, pretty aggressive sales are coming in. So I think uh, publicly I mentioned we had about 70 grand in sales in February. Um, this month will be up again, pretty significant growth, you know, 30. which is about 45% from the month before. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm shooting for. It looks pretty good right now. So, um, um, plus we're, I'm hoping we actually turn a, a big fat profit this month. I don't know if we will look, I'm going to try. I'm trying. Of course you are. Well, didn't, uh, I read that lift kits for less did 16 million the last year she was in business. Yeah, our last full year of revenue was 21. Um, obviously, we we were very uh, we benefited heavily from the stimulus money. Everybody was sitting at home, locked in their houses. A lot of people wanted to work on their vehicles, um, and so we it was a <laughs> huge banner year. But equally as devastating was we had to refund 25 percent of those orders because so many of our vendors were completely right. shut down. Yeah. Um, and that was frankly a John, it was catastrophic to the organization. I can um, imagine. Well, we're spending a significant amount of money on uh, paid Google ads, Facebook ads, you know, huge number. And Google doesn't if issue me a refund when someone cancels their order. So losing a five million, we took in 16 million in the, in the coffers 
and turned around and had to refund five million back. I mean, that's a twenty five percent cancellation rate. That's I don't know a lot of businesses that can uh, you know stay in business. So I, I saw it on Amazon for quite a few years, and the refunds were the worst part of it because it wasn't just the money. There, there was more expenses. You know, you paid money to make that money. Well, you lose that. Then you lose the sale and whatever else was attached to it. And it's like, wow, this is this is painful. And that to have 25 percent. Wow. No wonder you went under. I mean, yeah. that's, that's tough. But it you're back great. up and running now. You're making money. And this is not a marketplace, though, is it? This is a business where you have your own products in your own warehouse and you're in charge. That's right. So just like every other e-commerce model out there from like a Chewy.com or uh, carparts.com, car ID, um, all these large e-commerce businesses. The the downside of that obviously is that I have all the lifting. There's no network effects. There's no benefit from other people joining. It's just me out there going, buy your lift kit from lift kits for less, right? And, uh, and no, it's fine. It's, you know, look, we had a ton of revenue in the past with a huge database of, of people looking for a lift kit. So we're experienced, we get that back up. Revenue is going up quickly. So that's exciting. Yes, um, and in, you know, we wanted to speed up revenue, probably healthy business decision to be a, kind of a hybrid model using our sellers to make a, a fee, a, a take model on auto parts for less. But also when we go through lift kits for less, our margin comes up dramatically uh, upwards, you know, on some lines we're 40%, 50%. So hedging both both revenue models, I think is a, was a good decision. And um, and I think it's going to help us improve our overall numbers as as, as auto parts for less kind of takes off. Um, so that's where we're at today. Um, you know, that's that's. Uh, well, I heard you mention that you're working with some international companies. Are you doing business with international customers, or are you only working domestically? So we're, you know, just this morning, I had a, another manufacturer contact me. They're out of India. You know, they, they just reach out. We have, yeah, there's a, a lot of potential for worldwide um, integration. You know, there's, there's obviously uh, a lot of American made products that, uh, especially the European model, European customers are looking for. So we look, um, you know, as we expand and grow in the future, um, it's, we're for sure a model that can be, opened up across the world. Um, but today we're just strictly North American uh, focused, uh, US focused business model. Um, so that's a great that's question. That's what I was thinking too. Now you have financials coming out on the 31st of this month, yes? So we're due, we're, our calendar year ends January 31st, so we're due May 1st. May 1st. Correct. All right, we got another month. I wonder how I got March. Maybe just the M in the beginning of the letter. Hang in there, hang in there. So. Are we expecting some uh, good news in that financial? I'm hearing profits are increasing, growth is increasing. Um, any surprises we could look for when that comes out? Well, I think it just validates what I've been saying, right? You can say what you want and until people see it on paper or on a screen. Um, right. You know, that's that's really where um, hopefully. Yeah, especially with pinks. I I. I have been invested in pinks in a long time and pinks can be dangerous. Uh, pinks don't have a lot of validated information and filings are that validated information. So I am definitely a man about filings when it comes to the pinks. So I'm really into those. And you've had a bunch of them about your um, debt conversions. Lots of 8Ks come in there. I like to see 8Ks. Those are bricks in the wall. You can count on those. Right. So your company is definitely whittling down the debt, starting to increase revenues, You've got two business models. One that's working on a marketplace could end up being the biggest auto parts business in the world, at least in North America. And then you've got your lift kits for less, which is starting back up. We know can be successful, is going to add revenues to auto parts for less. Where do you see yourself in a year from now? So... so where we're at today is our entire focus is on revenue. Um, we we've, we've been negotiating um, with a large um, anchor investor, if you will, um, okay. and it's it's out there in the in the Twitter's Twitter sphere, um, X sphere. Um, so that once we're able to get the last debt holders locked up into some sort of agreement, the goal is for that anchor investor to come in and significantly invest in the company. 
of which the vast majority of those dollars are going to go straight to marketing, both lift kits for less and auto park for less. It's just, we want revenue growth, revenue growth, revenue growth, revenue growth, and do that in a healthy manner, try, uh, as close to profitable as possible, right? That growth versus profitability, that's a, that's gotta be a balance. And as long as I think it's healthy, um, then I think we'll continue to excite the market um, mm -hmm. and then continue to attract investors that wanna be part of a, a one year, two year, three year, four year uh, uh, vision for the future, so. Is there anything that I probably wouldn't know to ask, but you can tell us? So I, I know the biggest you know issue for a lot of retail uh, customers, um, kind of it's kind of granular. We had one particular um, uh, convertible note seller. Uh, everybody's been asking me. I just got the final conversion notice from our, our transfer agent. Uh, the balance of that note is 25 grand. I know a lot of people are going to want to know what that, what that looks like. So that's it. That's really the last of our um, sellers, if you will, that are, that are selling into the market. After right. that, you know, as long as we finish locking up uh, the rest of the lenders, um, I don't, I think it's going to be pretty blue sky for, for our retail investors. So I don't know what's going to hold us back from, from you know, really seeing some, some great gains uh, again no guarantees but i don't know what's holding us back we're, we're nearing profitability we're growing revenues we got these flicking lenders locked up so i feel good about it so that's the number last conversion 25 grand that's where we're at so you I, see this you see the light at the end of the tunnel i can tell yeah it's finally john it's been it's you know this has been uh it's been a, it's been a journey and uh, a lot of sacrifice to get here today and uh Big learning curve, um, but I'm I'm I couldn't be more excited for the future. I can see your excitement, and that makes me feel excited. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've got quite a lot of questions here. Um, how'd that happen? Oh, <laughs> uh, let, let me see. I just want to poke these up. Can you guys see these? You will in here in just a second. These are all the questions that I got, folks, from you on Twitter. Uh, you were all talking about, let's get those questions out. Let's ask them. But there wasn't a single question posted. So I said, hey, fellas, you got any questions for Chris? Oh, you didn't let me down. All night last night, you started throwing me questions. So I got a whole bunch of them here. I don't know if we're going to get through all of these, but I do want to tag on to some of these. I just wanted to let you know that we do have them here. I do take my uh, viewers seriously. So Let's see what we got here for a question that maybe you haven't covered yet. Um, let me see. I know there was one, John, around, you know, our authorizes is, is currently at 500 million authorized. And they were asking, do we right. expect to increase that or any kind of reverse? Can you guarantee no reverses? So, you know, if you were heavily diluting a stock, right, and you were just driving the price down triple zero one, triple zero four until it's there would be a need to do a reverse so that you could get the shot, uh, the stock trading again. Well, we have, I don't see any scenario in the next till the end, you know, until next year where there would be any need to, for any kind of reverse or so anyway, I, I can't, you know, <laughs> we were, we're actually the opposite, right? We were going to the NASDAQ and our float was, we had 7 million, you know, we had 20 million shares authorized. Yep. Anyway, it was tight, 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 so tight. Now we've loosened things up. Uh, we got the uh, 1.7 million in uh, debt converted into common stock with a two-year lockup. That's why you saw the uh, outstanding jump this, uh, what, yesterday? I think right. it was 91 million jumped up to... Um, whatever it's at today, 148 on the screen of that, John, just so everybody's aware, 120 million of that is the two year lockup for a common stock. So it's really, it's only 20 million that's out there. That's part of the outstanding. That was, um, you know, I guess it was before this. Yeah. Lockup. That's not, you know, just looking at it from how much the insiders own. I always like to see a strong hold from the insiders. That's a big confidence boost. They are holding not just an investment, but the same amount of risk as we are, if not more. So I see a strong hold here for the insiders. We have less than they do by a long shot, which now still we've got ourselves an excellent float. You don't have to have 7 million to have a great float. 27, 28, 30 million, 
That's beautiful. That's a nice float. So I like your share structure now, not to mention we are getting that debt conversion. We're getting new investors. It's all good. It's good, solid growth for the company. Yeah, thanks. I'm thousand percent committed here. So yeah, hit me with those questions if you've seen anything there that's interesting. Um all right, let's see what I can come up with here. I got to keep bouncing around, but I'm on top of it. Let's see. Uh, update about remaining convertible debt. We took it, that one already. Marketing budget. Do you currently freight internationally? We covered that one. What are your most? What are you most excited about for Flez going forward? Well, I want to see that market cap go up, <laughs> right? I'm, you know, I want to see some uh, real company value. You know, look, uh, if we're going to get to a major marketplace uplist, whether it's NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, I think we got to get a revenue about $5 million. So that's, this is a big year for us. we got to execute. we got to grow our revenue and show that we have a pathway to the NASDAQ um, to, or to a major. Does that, does that make it sound like next year you would be yeah. shooting for the NASDAQ? You know, I'm glad you said that. I think... I, if by middle of next year, if everything goes well and our debt holders work with us um, mm -hmm. and we grow revenue and things go well, then I don't see why we wouldn't be able to submit our application to, to a major exchange. So I think it's well within our... Um, I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. That's good to hear. I mean, everybody wants to go to the NASDAQ. Everybody says they're going to the NASDAQ. But as you said, you got to make more money. You got to get your market cap up. You got to have investors. You got to have debt. You got to have it all in place before you go there. We're seeing all that happen. So the confidence is building. That's why your company's exciting to everybody right now. Let's see what we've got here. Um, what manufacturers does Flez foresee working with in the future in the EV marine sector? Well, I suppose if you're working a marketplace, anybody and everybody, whoever comes to your door. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think that's what's about to happen is that as we start buying advertising and we start showing up everywhere, you know, sellers going to be like, we don't, you know, it's going to be FOMO. If you're missing out, let's get connected auto parts yep. for us. And because we're, we've made that process relatively simple, we're just like Amazon. It can come in through the API, come in through a Excel spreadsheet or come through an integrated partner. You can come in. I probably should save this for an actual PR. But anyway, you'd come in through major, major integrators. So it, it, we've made this very easy to connect to uh, to our marketplace. So relatively easy. Like parts are still parts, still hard, still big catalog, still year make model fitment. But we have solutions. Our team is built to do one thing and only one thing, help part sellers join our, our journey. Um, yeah. So we're able to execute that. Um and maybe we'll get some major chains this year. Like I said, it's at a, a group from, you know, they're a major, major retailer, a household name uh, saying, oh, we should really learn more about joining your network. I'm like, okay, well, let's get going. So that's it, John. We're, it's exciting, you know, and it's hard, but it's, that's great that it's hard because I know no one else wants to do this, uh, this journey. Well, how does the old saying go? If it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it. That's right. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right, let's see. Let's say funding is acquired. What will be the allocation of those funds? Will it be majority for advertising, web revamping, or is 100% of it going towards uh, an advertising campaign? Yeah, so obviously it won't be 100%. We have overhead. We're going to, but, sure you but do. I would say the, the vast majority of our dollars are going to go to revenue because that's what's going to fight the market, right? It's not like, oh, well, we're. We have this vision for the future that after we build 15 warehouses regionally across the country and we go into massive debt, then we're not going to happen. Like, look, we're not we don't have to rebuild this thing. That's where we're that's where we're at today. We're at the we're at the moment that we spend a buck on advertising. And how many dollars do we get back? Is it is it five bucks? Is it 10 bucks? Is it 20 bucks? Right. right. So that. That's an exciting moment. I'm not I'm not begging for people to say, hey, give me money because I got to go hire 15 people. I need to go build a warehouse. I need to go buy inventory. I don't need to do any of that. I need to go. Like that. How many employees do you have right now, Chris? Zero, right? I have zero employees. I That's have no right. Employees. You got zero. No expense there. You're a one-man operation because the marketplace doesn't need workers. That is a platform. <laughs> I, They're doing all the work. All you do is pull in the profits and maintain that platform. So I want to be—I want to be really clear here. I'm not a one-man show. I hate people that say I'm a self-made man. It's the biggest lie in the world. If I, without the friends and family and people who believe in me and support right. me, 
and I'm not, you know, do we have an actual W-2? No. Let me tell you, my wife is my partner. She, she puts in more hours on the books for this business to ensure it is our core competency is our ability to um, track every single order, every single profitable profitability down to what our fee is on a, on a, you know, a, a transaction through say, um, on five, anyway. on six million products. Yeah. So we're tracking oh. everything at the SKU level, right? And that's, that's Carlene and she's amazing. And then my son works here at the office with me. He comes in and processes all the orders, does all the shipments and he does it for no paycheck. And it's, you know, we're all in this as a family, but it's more than that, right? I've got my buddy, Troy does all of our marketing guys, a world-class marketing creates all of our content, all of our emails, world-class guy that he's not taking a paycheck. He just, he loves me, wants to see us succeed. So my story is, yes, I'm in front of the world. Yes, it's my face, but I am telling you, I have an army of, of friends and family that believe in me and believe in this organization. And I think that's why I'm here today, frankly, because you're like, why is why is this guy trending? Why are people talking about Chris Davenport and Auto Parts for Less and Ticker FLAS? It's not because of me. It's because of, of the Davenport posse. That's right. So, <laughs> oh yeah. hey, a good team. You know, they say behind every good man is a better woman. You know, we get our inspiration from our muses. It doesn't come from inside us. It comes from about us, around us, from those that support us. So good for you for recognizing that. Thank you. Let me see. We've got some more questions here. Uh, once Auto Parts for Less is a household name, which I have no doubt it will be, and self-sufficient without the need for funding, do you foresee any buybacks or dividends uh, for your loyal shareholders? Yeah, that's getting way out there, right? Eight years. It is. Yeah, maybe, you know, eight, 10 years for sure. Right. I, I love dividend businesses. I don't think they're, you know, they're not as volatile as, um, you know, like the Amazons and the other, those kind of tech stocks, right. NVIDIA, but you know, a household stand, this is probably leads itself to a, a dividend business. Like auto parts, probably not the most sexiest of, you know, you don't go, Ooh, I'm auto parts. So sexy. I want to invest, you know, so probably a dividend model um, would be a good model for, for an automotive parts. only. Actually, market. I think auto parts for less is sexy. When I see her standing in a half a trillion dollar marketplace and there's no other marketplace auto parts store online. Oh, I think she looks very sexy. <laughs> Looking good to me. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue. I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you have any uh, potential acquisitions or mergers that you just tossed around or have sitting on the back burner? I, you know, nothing pending, nothing eminent. There's one okay. particular company. They're uh, an integrator. They're an integrator. Um, so they, they help sellers access other marketplaces. Um, that uh, CEO actually lives here in Las Vegas and we, we usually get together for a happy hour once a week or every other week. And he's looking to grow his business. I'm looking to grow my business. And if there's some synergy there um, anyway, but nothing, just, just small talk right now. And uh, right, but, right. But yeah. So always looking That's for how it starts. small talk at Starbucks and then you move on from there. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, I saw a question here that was kind of interesting. Um, oh, right now you're doing disclosures and you're not doing the K's and the Q's. Uh, have any ideas when you will get to SEC reporting? I'm sorry. Uh, Do you have 10 K's and 10 Q's right now? We Yeah, so we're fully reporting. We're current. Our oh, K my bad. I look at a lot of stocks. No worries. <laughs> no worries. So, yeah, we're fully current. Everything's, uh, you know, public, uh, fully reporting. So. Um, and our, like I said, the, uh, the K will be due May 1st. And then we have like a two week um, buffer there. So anyway, one of our investors wants to know um, if you have plans to bring on a CFO, more staff to help you at some point. I mean, obviously at some point you're going to need some more help, but do you have any plans here in the future? Have any target people in mind? You know, I, I want to surround myself with the brightest minds and the biggest minds. Um, and, but, Typically, you know, I'm not taking a paycheck. So I, I and I have no, how am I supposed to go hire the best people and give them money? I think that we're, 
I think a year from now and revenues take off and we'll bring in investment dollars. There's a lot of liquidity. Market cap is up. Yeah, that presents itself to an opportunity to start surrounding myself with an incredible team. Right now, I feel like I have an incredible team, right? I, I feel like I have some great people around me. They well, it's may- working. The people you have are working and your business is growing. So they're doing a good job. My focus is to try to be as, uh, to get to profitability. I don't want to turn around and, and give that away in labor right now. Now, in the very near future, as soon as possible, as I balance growth and risk and uh, revenue, then yeah, we got to bring in sharp people. And um, so I'm very open to that. That makes sense. In due time, when it's time. Um, I guess you had 32 engineers help develop your website. Somebody wants to know, did you have all 32 at one time or were you burning them out and having to go through them one after another? No. So we use a, a big, big agency in India out of Ahmedabad. Um, great, great partner. It's a personal friend of mine there. He lives in Atlanta. So um, allows us to leverage a very large labor force, highly skilled, all aspects of uh, digital commerce from, you know, front end development, back end development, all the different code languages from React, C++, um, .NET, um, so on and so forth, digital marketing. So we're able, you know, it's a, it's an, it's an incredible partnership. Um, I can pick my, I can text them right now, um, say, Haren, how are things going? I know uh, the lead guy, Kier, just got back from India. Um, so we're very tight. Uh, it's, a, it's an incredible relationship. And again, that's what I'm talking about. I have incredible people behind me who believe in me. Um, Haren's company, I own 180 grand. He's like, Chris, Chris, you pay me when you get it. I'm not worried. You know, so, and that's on the books. It's cool. not public knowledge. I'm not saying anything that's not out there. So, um, but, uh, you know, we, we at our peak, yeah, we had well over 30 uh, programmers on this platform. This is massive lift. When you're building a marketplace, you're talking about every aspect of connecting um, an ecosystem. So you have, you have a checkout page, a check-in page, you have a, you know, every aspect, the listing yeah. page, the microsite, um, how, to, how to control your products on that, um, the return site, the uh, email site, you're right. This is just, it's just, it's massive. So you it's need how much you know, you sound like a programmer yourself. I feel ignorant to be honest, John. I'm like, these guys are so damn smart. I'm like, this is just make it work. No, you know, I was, I don't know if you know, John, I flew to India in the middle of the pandemic. Um, oh, I, wow. I, literally India was locked down. We did not let anybody in. And I went to the consulate's office, San Francisco, got an emergency work visa. And I headed to India, November, 2020. And I was there November 2020, December 2020, and uh, January 21. This is where the Delta virus, uh, the most deadly of the viruses, was born, came out of India. Um, and uh, anyway, so it's a, to, to, to really build out a robust um, roadmap, um, the, the UX experience, I sat there with that with my team and built that uh, side by side. So um, like I said, I know I'm the face and I, and I, and I, I enjoy um, people saying kind things and, and that's all great, but trust me, I have an army behind me uh, that wants to see us succeed. So now do you have uh, India working on a mobile app for the auto parts for less? So we're fully optimized. It's not an app, you know, it's not an app, but we're fully optimized for mobile. Oh. I would say 90% of our traffic today is through mobile. So do we have an actual app? No. Um, will we get right. one? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it done. Right now, we're just lean and mean. We're just going to capitalize on what we've built. And let's try as much revenue through that, our current model. Um, as we get more and more revenue and we get more and more investment dollars, we can increase the team again. We can start adding more and more value, other benefits. Um, I'm interested in rolling out a membership program to monetize this. Right now, we have a 10% take model. We get 10 cents on every dollar. There's nothing to cost to join. Our sellers can join for free. Once a sale is made, they win, I win. That's our model. But there's other ways to monetize. So we have a warranty program. We make 70 cents. If anybody adds a warranty at checkout, that's another way to monetize. We have um, Amazon has Prime and we have time. Get your parts on time. I saw that. Thank you. Yeah, the time program, we can start monetizing. That's $9.95 a month. Join the time program. Comes with roadside assistance, windshield repair, you know, a lot of other values. Uh, get it installed locally. Have an installed person show up at your house, install the headlights. There's a lot of ways to grow this and innovate and drive value to our community, right? Those things are Amazon aren't thinking about, eBay aren't thinking about. They're thinking about, you know, how to sell watches and Nikes and whatever else they do. So uh, we're, we're going to continue kicking ass here, John, and uh, bringing value to our community. So the website is fully functional on a phone. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Fully optimized. Absolutely. Right, right. So I've never understood why you need an app. If you can make a website fully functional on a phone, you don't need an app. It's working. It's working. Why put all the extra money into building something you don't need? So I'm glad to hear that. I mean, you got to have a phone. As you said, I think uh, more than 80% of all dealings are being done on phone now rather than on uh, the computer. I'm still on the computer. I'm ancient. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think we've got close to most of those questions, believe it or not. Um, somebody was asking, I don't know if you're aware, search feature on the site. They can't find it. Do you have a search feature? <laughs> well, I think what they're probably complaining about is that we have the our particular search. So typically, if you go to carparts.com or car ID or rock auto, it's it's your make, model, submodel, trim. It's, it's a, it's a drop-down model. Right. And Auto Parts for Less, um, we do not have that model. We have a, a kind of a Google model. You just type in what it is you're searching for. I got a 2016 Ford F-150 and I need headlights. I've got a 2002 Toyota Tacoma and I'm looking for a, a, a leaf spring. So right. it, it's called Elastic Search. It's not a perfect search. We're a little over a year into launching this technology. There's a lot to get done and a lot to improve. Um, currently we have 6.2 million products on our platform. My goal is within three years to be about 100 million products. And as that catalog grows and gets more and more people, it'll drive more value to the buyer and buyers are going to be coming. And, and we get this network effect that marketplaces benefit from. We'll get exponential trust with that becomes exponential growth. And that's why these business models are so successful. It's very early, but we are executing. There's no cancers. There's no, you know, you know, this thing is built for growth. If, if someone comes in tomorrow and says, I want to put 10 million products on the platform, we don't have to tear it down and rebuild it. We go click the button, load your products. Now we're up to 16 million products. That really differentiates us because I built this for growth, not to go, well, we'll kind of figure it out and redo it in three years. And, you know, so right. we're ready for Yeah, growth. a lot of people don't understand that it's pretty easy when you are a big corporation to upload, as you said, a million products. It's not like you have to do each product one at a time. They've got file formats and you bulk load them all up in there. And in one day you could have your million products up. So you can get a lot of extra parts, a lot of extra customers in a very short amount of time. And that is the more you sell, the more customers you're going to be bringing in. It's going to be that yin and yang rolling on, rolling on. And that's what I'm excited about. Right now, the combustible engines are phasing out. Electric are coming in. I see you've already got electric uh, resellers on your site. They're already getting their parts in there. So whether we're re using combustible engines, EV, cars, uh, boats, your site is there for anybody who wants to sell their vehicle parts to anybody, which I think is just a huge, huge market. A hundred million parts my God, I never even considered that many parts. You know, it's like, wow, that would be gigantic. You would be the hugest auto parts store in the world by all means. You know, you know, eBay advertises they have 112 million products for sale. The problem with eBay is they allow the same part to be lifted over and over and over and over. That's right. So it's really not 112. It's 112 million listings. Yes. It's not 112 million. It's the same product. Like you can go in right now and everybody take a second, open up a second window, go to eBay, type in 95-24-011. You will see results of about 100. It'll say results, 100. That same listing on Amazon and that same listing on Auto Parts for Less is one result. And that's why Amazon wins because sellers compete to win the buy box. And that drives massive value to the consumer. And that's our business model. We are a catalog model. eBay is a garage sale. Everybody just throws their stuff, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know who's selling it. You don't know if it's a knockoff. Our platform is made up of the largest, most trusted part sellers in the world. In the most cases, it, it is the manufacturer itself. And that's, you're getting options. You're getting choices on the marketplace. You go to Napa, Napa has their parts. That's right. You go to the marketplace, you get Napa and every other company right. selling that part. And right. now you've got choice, 
which is why we liked Walmarts. It gave you options and choices that yep. weren't going to break the bank. And that's what I like. You go to Napa, that's their parts. You don't have a choice. That's the price. No, no, you know, trying to get my business. It's just you want it or not. Yep. The marketplace, you're going to give me options. And I like that. That's the one thing I like about Amazon, but it is the one thing I hate about eBay. I can go through three pages and see the same exact ad over and over and over. And that's not a good shopping experience. It's, it's horrible. aggravating. It's horrible. It do, they don't, you know, like, look, we're all consumers here in America. And when you go somewhere, you're like, well, I just, is this the lowest price? Is it in stock? When am I going to get it? It's not a basic kind of concept. It's not reasonable. And eBay, you don't, you have to try to figure that out yourself. They don't aggregate the most important and worse today. And I, and I hate even talking about eBay, but they've really have sold their soul because all they care about now are who's willing to pay the most. They've gone to a promoted listings format. In the past, they had this top rated plus, which meant you were the best seller. You had the best value. The bet you were the cat's meow. That mm -hmm. one, the top of the listing, not anymore. Now it could be whatever, whoever. And they're like, I'm willing to give you 30% of the order eBay and you show up number one. Anyway, that's not us. We're not going to take money just to, to, to move a product. We want this to be a free market enterprise where sellers compete to drive value to the consumer so the consumer wins. And you're going to build trust that way, right? Yes. Not selling your soul just to, to drive value to your stockholders. Going through these questions, I, we've pretty much covered them all. I see one question here that I did not cover. And I do recall you mentioned this, but let's mention it here too. Will Brett Rawson be working with management to cure the rest of the debt situation? So Brett's job is to, to look, this is the guy we're talking that everybody's been talking to me about. Huh? Yeah. So Brett's goal is to fund the company. And hopefully if, if I execute and it's, it's my shoulders, Brett's, you know, Brett's not going to tell me how to run the business. I'm going to run the business. And right. if I take the money he gives me and invest that money and we see revenue going up and up and up, and we continue to work, focus on fundamentals, fundamental solid business policies He'll continue to give us more and more money. It's, it's really, it's it's driven by the market. And with those dollars, it's I, I don't think it's Brett's responsibility. It's my responsibility to go to my debt holders and say, hey, can would you take, you know, what, what can we do to resolve this? Now, either you stay on the sidelines and you benefit from an uplist where you get whole, uh, these are lenders, or I try to negotiate and take some of those dollars that Brett gives me to pay off debt. I, I don't know yet, right? This is, let's see how this goes. I think if if we hit it out of the park and revenues are going through the roof, these lenders are going to say, Chris, we're not worried about it. We're going to sit on the sidelines. We want to ride with you to the NASDAQ. That's where we all win. That's the best outcome with the Brett Rosen dollars. Let's explode revenue, period. That's where we're at today. The bottom line is we are at the starting point. We've actually got the seed breaking through the earth. We see it growing, but where it's going to grow, how big it's going to grow, what branches are going to break off. Well, that's all to come. We've got to work with the plant as it's growing, but we see it growing. And that's exciting because the, the automotive market has been here forever. It's going to be here forever. There's room for more. And I don't, outside of eBay and Amazon, which is not the best automotive marketing experience. There's nowhere to go except car companies, you know, parts companies. We need a marketplace. So you're filling a gap that should have been filled a long time ago. Really should have. Right. So I, I think your name will become uh, commonplace. I think auto parts for her less would just roll off people's tongues as Kleenex does. So you're going to go get some parts. Yeah. I got to call auto parts for less. It's Napa down the street. And they're all auto parts for, for less to me now. <laughs> That's how popular I think you're going to get. Thank you, John. I'm excited too. Very excited. Thank you for your support. And thank you for this time to spend with you. I don't think there's a whole lot we've missed. I'm sure the investors know something I've missed. Sorry, folks. We do the best we can with the time we've got. We are just under an hour here, which is exactly where Chris and I wanted to take this. Chris, do you have any final words you would like to give to your current investors or new investors? Um, 
I've always made it a core value to me to be as transparent as possible, as honest as possible, and, and open as possible. So, um, you know, I, I put a tweet out yesterday. If you're in Las Vegas and you want to meet with me, I'm happy to meet. Um, it's a great town. It's conducive to a beverage, coffee, or or any any other um, elixir out there. But um, I uh, I look forward to riding this with with the common shareholder. Um, I haven't taken a salary. I'm all in, and uh, let's go sell a lot of parts. Thank you for your time today, Chris. Hopefully we'll get to talk to you again. We look forward to that day and we're all gonna be watching the stock. I'm excited about Flez. Thank you for your time, folks. Remember, there's a lot more information over there at Buffalo Fireside Chats. They talked a lot about the share structure and the debt conversion, so we didn't miss it. I'm just pushing you over to a fellow influencer who does some real good work too. And Chris gave some excellent information over there. Till we speak again, folks, remember, do your own due diligence, whatever stock you're interested in. Just don't count on your influencers. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. <laughs>